Well, welcome once again to the Faith First podcast. My name is Pastor Craig Brown with First Lutheran Church in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I'll be your host. We are a community of faith where we say we discover more together. This is episode 85, December 5th, 2024. On the episode today, an, a star-studded show. We have It's like a Christmas show spectacular. You know when they used to do those Christmas shows and uh, bring in all the, all the stars? We are doing that for you today. We've got Maddie Newhouse, who's going to be talking about our brand new Christmas decorations, some exciting things happening around church that you'll see in our scene. We have Pastor Katie to talk about one of the deepest discussions we've had about how we treat each other as people, just in kind of the madness we're seeing uh, following all the college football games and and just, yeah, the way things are kind of right now uh, needs a little bit of a touch of Christ. So uh, Pastor Katie will be talking with me about that, and Deb Hansen will be here to pray with us. She always does a great job of that. We are glad you are along with us here today. Let's go ahead and get things started. And as always, put our faith first. Growing up in Iowa, would you say you you talked you were a Hawkeye fan, right? Yep. Well, how about Iowa State? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and with that, we'll welcome in <laughs> Maddie Newhouse. Find out what's brewing around First Lutheran Church. We put up some Christmas decorations. Yes. And you were in charge of that this year. You took the reins. You want to tell us what people can expect when they walk in to, for Christmas this year? Yes. Well, we have a brand new Christmas tree in the sanctuary this year. It's beautiful. Yes. Um, our previous tree had well outlived its <laughs> lifespan and, and was ready to move on to the next life (laughs) we made we made poor michael beckman put that thing together for the last i know four or five years and he just grumbled every time Mm -hmm. a little more this thing is terrible to put together he was overjoyed that Uh, one (laughs) it was gone and two he didn't have to help this year put up the new one (laughs) yeah it ended up being uh, me and uh, lou banker one of our Mm -hmm. church members and it went right up so i'm sorry michael this year was very very easy we had it all together and Less than 15 minutes. Yeah. Was easy. The hardest part, I think, was fluffing all the branches because yeah. they were all packed in in the box. Mm-hmm. But hopefully that'll be easier. So what else besides the tree we got to look forward to? Um, and so we have our typical Advent wreath. We have the creche from Israel that is up on the altar. Mm-hmm. Um we also have um, some beautiful, big versions of the Jesse tree blocks that our families have oh, been yeah. receiving. Yeah. So those are um, along the wall in the north side transept. Um, so if you're looking up at the altar, it's over off to the right. Um, and so those are big boxes that ha- that are basically a giant version of what everybody has at home, um, as well as a giant Jesse tree as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really pretty. And Pastor Katie has found some little Jesse trees that are scattered throughout the church as well. So you can keep an eye out for those. We have a couple getting married uh, this weekend, and they're not members of the church, but long story, they found us here downtown and and uh, really plugged in and kind of uh, fell in love with the place, which happens. Yeah. <laughs> so they came in and saw the, the visit with me for some premarital the other day, and I said, do you guys want to see the sanctuary, what, it looks, what it's going to look like for your wedding? They said, yeah, yeah, yeah. They walked down, their mouths just dropped open. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, this is so beautiful. So we I'm it. so proud of it. Yeah, to have a Christmas tree behind mm-hmm. them and glimmering. I think it'll make a fantastic wedding and yes, fantastic Christmas Eve. Yes. Anything else uh, you're looking forward to uh, in particular this Christmas? So on December 23rd, I have more volunteers coming in and we will bedeck the tree. <laughs> okay. Oh. We'll finish decking all the halls. Oh, we've also got um, wreaths up on the choir loft as well, hanging from there, so that anybody that's up on the chancel is able to (laughs) to, turn around. Yeah, turn around and have a nice sight as well. Or on your way out. Yes. If you sit near the front. Uh, Mm -hmm. And then tearing everything down in January, do we still need a few people for that? Yes, I could still use people for that. That will be on January the 6th. Okay. So if you want to help us uh, pack it all up, it should be pretty Mm -hmm. quick, but. Very, yep. very much needed. 
Yes, uh, we'll get, meet at 10 a.m. here at the church. Send Maddie an email. You can find her contact on her <clears throat> webpage, firstlutheranco.org. That is the email, right? Maddie, yep. M-A-D-D-Y-N for new house yep. at firstlutheranco.org. So shoot her an email or call the church office uh, or just show up January 6th. Yeah. <laughs> Which it'll yeah. work. Many hands make light work. Thanks for stopping by today, Maddie. Yes. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas to you. And that's a look at what's brewing at First Lutheran Church. <laughs>
of all people. I'm not the eldest. I'm not the youngest. I'm not the father. I'm not. I'm in the between, and I'm taking care of the responsibility of everyone who lives under this tent. And that's what the stories have been about is who's going to be capable of doing it with a heart for God. In the end, we know that uh, Jacob or Joseph is the one that is has a heart for God, but we don't know that at the time. Right. So are you saying you see more our lens or you're seeing the lens of Joseph's father, Jacob, right? Mm-hmm. And the kind of responsibility he has in passing on and then the brothers or the, the descendants, their responsibility kind of caring for yeah, you know the brothers think he's he's been uh, fl- uh you know being very arrogant with his coat because i'm sure the coat costs very much we hear that it was a, this, a brilliant coat and that it was a thorn in their side to see them in the coat but don't associate coat with the wealth of the father it's the responsibility that this coat will have um he's also why is he wearing the coat because his mama is the one that Jacob was really in love with all along. He 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 has all these kids, but he loves um, his the wife, the mom, and the messiness here of Joseph is he's not the firstborn, but he is. He's the firstborn with the wife of choice. What a disaster this is writing up to be, mm-hmm. because you basically have three or four women having all these twelve children, and you randomly pick number what. 11 out of all these kids and say, you're the one though. Mm -hmm. You're the one who's going to carry the family line. No wonder there's conflict and chaos. But in my mind, it was because he saw you will carry forth though the blessing, the responsibility, and you have a heart for God. And we see that in his stories because eventually he will be the one who comes up with the plan to uh, save people from starvation. Not child number one. Mm -hmm. He threw him in the pit. Not child number two. He went along with it. It'll be child number 11 who um, will get the blessing and will be the one to basically save the people. Do you think it's too much to boil it down to just pure jealousy? Oh, I I do think it's pure jealousy. And jealousy is part of one of our sinfulness, right? It's even from the very beginning. um, Were Adam and Eve jealous of God because God had authority and power and, and said this isn't enough? What happens to their first kids? Cain and Abel. Jealousy, again, we constantly have this. It's not enough. What you have provided me, oh God, is not enough. Or I want what I want when I want it. And I want what you got. Yeah. And I want to take what you got. So I think uh, there's also this tendency for us to not see the depth of words like betrayal and jealousy, deceit, are not words we use in our common language. I mean, when's the last time I said that was a deceitful thing? Meaning these words carry a lot of weight. I've always tend to boil it down to the brothers other than Joseph were kind of us. I mean, we're Mm -hmm. humans, fallible. Mm -hmm. And then Joseph kind of represents Christ, that... Mm -hmm. Scripture says, oh, man, we were when they realized who Joseph is, that he actually went over to Egypt and became kind of in charge of everything. I think the key financial country in charge of everything. And he was the steward or the person, the manager in charge of it all. Mm -hmm. He's a kind of key figure. Then they start to grumble and they realize, "Uh uh-oh, when Scripture says we were really bad to this kid and now he's in position of authority over us, he's probably going to be revengeful and seek retribution on us. That's their first thought. Is right. that <laughs> because is they, that, they're thinking the way they would exactly, think, right? Yeah. And but once he, again, those people for God think counter just what you're getting at, think counter, yeah, because they have a heart for God. And Joseph doesn't display that uh, behavior that they thought he would display, but he displays, he weeps for them, he cries with them. He says, I'm always your brother, I'm always going to take care of you. He does the right thing, he does a compassionate thing, he does a loving thing. To me, he does the Christ like thing, yeah. And I can see in this Jesse Tree story, Christ emerging from Joseph mm. and and his, his uh, gracefulness towards us. It's such a lovely story. And what I appreciate is, again, those words, deceit, betrayal. They are not words we use all the time. And like I just said, I think that it's powerful when these words seem um, outside of our... We like to say somebody's mean. That's, that person was mean to me. That word, person betrayed me. And now there's a story. That person was deceitful. The, even the, to say the word, you almost snarl, right? Deceitfulness. This has people that the best part of the brothers is that they throw him in the pit and he doesn't die. I mean, that's supposed to be the good news. Well, at least he didn't die. <laughs> you know, he was supposed to be eaten by lions. But hey, he's only sold into slavery instead. 
let's go and break our father's heart, right? I don't know what they, how did you expect this to end? That he'd say, oh, well, now my favorite one's gone. I'll switch loyalties. Instead, his heart is broken and he yeah. never really recovers. He doesn't. No, he's a broken person. And, and and I think if that is our example, too, is I just, I can't imagine God watching this story and not wanting to say, enough. Um, you people, stop acting this way. Stop, stop. And we do hear the prophets speaking in and saying, you know, this is not how we how you're supposed to treat each other. I think that this story has such a huge opportunity for us to acknowledge the coat looks pretty amazing, but the price that he pays unknowingly to be chosen by your elder over all your other brothers, he pays a price for that, but he's willing to do it. I wonder if the challenge with deceitfulness is it implies that there's evil intent behind it or, or mal... mal- What's the word I'm looking for? Malnificence? Yeah, uh, wow, big word. Thank you very know. much. We're that Steve when we need him. <laughs> right. You know, it does, but you don't deceit by accident. I can uh, fail you. I can make a mistake. I can miscommunicate. These are misses. Right, and that's what you said when you're mean. That person was mean yeah. to me. Mean you can be just in the mo- heat right. of the moment. You're right. not. It's you're not deceitful. planning to be. Whoa, that is an intentional act to be deceitful. Because mm-hmm. what's the opposite of deceitful? Honest. So it's either or, right? You're you're not dishonest makes it sound a little softer, but I think that you and I are wrestling with what is this all about? Well, sin. And the only way to correct sin is to bathe it in God's grace. Again, another story, bathing it in grace that's unimaginable and impossible in our right, but only through God. And again, Joseph has a heart for God. Only through God can this story be redeemed, be forgiven, be bathed in a forgiveness that goes beyond what I'm capable of. If I find an example of myself and the brothers, I'm hoping that the story will say, wake up. You you can treat one another better than this. Yeah. And my mind went right to, as I'm reading this scripture, uh, all the altercations I watched on the field in college football this mm-hmm. last weekend. I think there were like eight of them. Yep where people are throwing fists after the game and not shaking hands with each other and just disrespecting one another, mm-hmm. fighting, violence, hatred, meanness. Mm-hmm. I, I think that none of that was pre-planned or, you know, oh, the, but, but, but it's, it's, I, it the, the human emotions just come out and they're, we're just awful to each other. I think that's yeah. humanity I, I its core. I'm going to, um, my sports newscasters that I've been listening to, as if we didn't think this was going to happen, though. We have told each one of these 18, 19, and 20-year-olds, this is the most important game of your career. Mm-hmm. They're 18, 19, 20 years old. This is the most important. We're going we're gonna to make sure that you're in no pain. We're going to make sure you're ready. We're going to feed into you. We're going to put 100,000 people watching you, let alone TV rights, right. and are all going to watch you, little 18, 19, 20-year-old. And then you're going to have this game that's so intense. You Go, 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 go. But when it's over, win or lose, shake hands and get over it. Who's responsible here? We set up young mm-hmm. people to behave badly. Let alone paying them hundreds of thousands of yeah. millions of dollars. And now putting take pressure on them. Now take ring after ring <laughs> after ring. Back in the day when I was in college, the only people who came to all these games were usually students in the players' families. Mm-hmm. We now have people that can bet on all these games, that can make a lot of money on these games. Sorry, people who do that. I mean, this is not condemnation of that. I'm just saying there's a lot at stake. Yeah, there's a lot of rings, I'm hearing you say. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. what the newscasters were saying, too, as they were debating what their vision of was with all these brawls. What broke my heart was that one of the newscasters said, and I can't wait for more of it. Wow. And the other one just sat there and went, I'm waiting for this to be called back into order. Yeah, I think in the off season. The powers that be are going to take a hard look at. A big thing for me was now we're just uh, it's a sports talk show now, but uh, <laughs> the flag planting. So the opposing team, the visiting team wins, and they go plant their flags, try, trying to claim the ground of the, those that they've defeated, and that's just totally disrespectful. And that's led to a lot of it. I think they'll just ban that. Yeah, I think they'll practice. ban it because it but, also ruins the field. But but still, I, the the way we the way we react. Mm-hmm. So let's take Ohio State, Michigan as a specific example. It was at Ohio State Stadium, and they lost, and Michigan goes and plants a flag at midfield Ohio State. Ohio State can't control Michigan planting the flag, but they can control their actions and their their reactions. And the reaction was to go throw fists at them. Mm -hmm. And I just think that we as a society, and I don't know if you agree with this, Pastor Katie, but I just think the hollowing out of religion and ethos in our whole societies, we draw back. 
from our influence just as leaving a mass of, of almost like animals, you know? We just treat each other horribly. Oh, what? You mean there's a story of God's grace in this? Yes. Because here's the thing, again, attentionality, and what are we teaching generation after generation? When there is no faith, when there is no foundation, when people go into crisis— we have not given them the tools to have a respectful disagreement, yet we want everybody to disrespect. Here's the thing. you got 18-year-olds on the field. One lost, one won. Back in the day, that was a handshake and a trophy. Now it's a, I want to put your face in it. I would say in this game, too, what was missing was that, you're right, I can't control your reactions to winning. It was a big game. You won. I disagree with the, the flag planning thing, but let's say you win. But the other team needs to walk off the field. Yeah. And Th- that's us in that life. You have to walk off. That is a real gift to learn just to walk away. That I would than say though. Fight. But what did we do? We have this big battle. And then to have a newscaster say, Yeah, but I want more of that. I look back at your story again. It's supposed to be a better story because at least the lions didn't kill him. He just gets sold into slavery and has this horrible life. And we're supposed to be like, Yeah, but it was bad. The brothers behaved badly. What happened to the brothers? They actually, all of them have very bad outcomes. One by one, they fail as fathers. They fail as brothers. Mm. They do not, these become the 12 tribes of Israel. Yes, they have their own rights. Their tribes are known as great things um, and eventually will be religious leaders and so forth and so on. But personally, they fail. Why? Because in a moment of jealousy, in a moment where they could have extended grace, their best action is, well, at least my brother is a slave instead of thrown into a pit with lions and killed. They have lost their way. And they try on their own to redeem their story. And only through God's grace can this story be redeemed. Yeah. You have a broken father who has no more leadership. He can't give anything to his sons anymore. And you have sons now that have committed a crime that they're all in on. And now you have this exiled brother who, when he sees them, responds in a way no one could have imagined, responds with grace. And I hope I'm the one, I hope I'm Joseph. I hope that that's the way I can look at life, but I'm so human. I think sometimes I just let my humanness go. So if I haven't practiced and I haven't had opportunities to show respect in non-contentious moments, yeah. I'm going to probably act badly when it's really fist to fist. And that's where I'm going. So yep. I get to preach this weekend, and I'm trying to help the listener put themselves in Joseph's situation. Yeah. You've had people betray you and be mean to you. Mm-hmm. So how are you going to respond? Mm-hmm. And Jesus will eventually tell us to turn the other cheek, wow. uh, to treat others as you want to be treated. Every I was just talking with somebody just <laughs> about this the other day. Every world religion has that kind of golden rule to it. Mm-hmm. In fact, I was teaching our Boy Scouts a a class on ethics because I think it's hollowed out of them too. Mm -hmm. And so I was teaching this ethics and I said, listen, this Christianity doesn't have the cornerstone on this. Mm -hmm. And I told them all the major religions and kind of their golden rule that they have and to show them that people of faith, of all different faiths, want to respect each other and live in harmony and peace. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what Christ is all about here. And that's what Jacob show. That's what Joseph uh, shows. I I agree with you. We want to live in peace, but when peace has been provided to us, we often still say it's not enough. So God, God makes the perfect garden and all is well and Adam and Eve go not enough. So I think we want peace when we don't have it. We seek it. When we have it, we often become complacent towards it. I would say, too, in in all of the conversation, it's intentionality, and we need to be able to practice the, the, the ways that we can have conflict with each other. And it's not just you listen to me and I listen to you. Sometimes we have to come to an agreement that loving one another is more than just uh, tolerating one another. But instead, I wish for you what you wish for, and you wish for me what I wish for, and we're going to live in each other's Um, best self. It's Ted Lasso who says that, right? I wish that people, I get it wrong, but I wish people would judge me for, I hope people do not judge me for my weakest moment. And I think to myself, man, my weakest moments, I'm glad there wasn't a TV camera. I wasn't on some reality TV show because I don't know if I would have had my happy face on going, oh, but that's okay. If I had been at these games, um, my disappointment would be, you can't bring children to these games anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, because the, the, it has escalated to violence. It has not just escalated to disagreements. Like I said, back in the day, what happened? You lost. It was ugly. 
Uh, people pouted back home in their tailgating parties. A, a trophy was switched here and there, and everybody went home with tails between their legs if they lost and the woohoo if they won. But, I mean, just a two-team brawl on the field. Now, as a Hawkeye fan, the one thing I would say is we we did well this weekend, right? But we just as could have – our 18-, 19-year-olds uh, could just thing. be as, yep. as sidelined. The shoe it, could have been easily on the other yep, foot. It's up to us to teach children. It's back to Deuteronomy. We do these things to teach our children because they are watching, and they will watch what we do, not always what we say. I guess for me it boils down to Joseph lost the first round and got sold in the slavery, right? right? And then he won the second round and was in a place of power. Now, is he going to rub his, his brother's face in it now that he's won? And, and we're seeing all these – Sports teams win and want to rub their opponent's face in it. It's not enough to win. It's an, yeah. it has to be humiliation. Politics, same thing. Yeah. So your party wins, and, and now you're you're just the other party followers are expecting to get their faces rubbed in it. Right. That that's what these brothers are saying. Well, we're expecting you to rub our face in it, Joseph, and he doesn't. Mm-hmm. I'm just. I think that's an example for us. If you felt slighted in you know the election or or at work or your sports team or your brothers and sisters or whoever it is. There's a different way to live. That's what Christ is calling us. That's what Joseph shows us. Yes. To be, be magnanimous and to be loving and to be grace-filled. And, and it's not easy. It is not. And, and when you're the other side and all you can see is red, right? We say that all the time. All they can see is red. Yeah, because you're so angry. You right? just see the color red, yeah. Our hope is that you've had moments to practice to regroup and so you can respond. I think, though, that um, one thing that's hard is when I'm coming at this, for the brother's opinion, it had been a lifelong priority and privilege for Joseph. It didn't happen overnight. We don't teach these teams overnight how to be this aggressive with each other. We pick players who will be this aggressive. We pump up fan base and get them that aggressive. We, we, we set the stage. This is gladiator moments. And if you watch gladiator TV movies, it's wicked. I mean, it's just, it's not our best self. Yeah, bloodthirst. And God calls us back to, this isn't my peace for you. Yeah. So I think the humanness is on both sides of both parties. How will we go from reaction to response to just simply sometimes walking away? Wow, what a great deep discussion. Who would you know, have thought? I love it. I love it. <laughs> We need that baby to come and save us all. Oh, Lord, Lord, thank you for Jesus. (laughs) But for now, we wait. (laughs) Yes, we do that so well. Uh, Thanks for being with us today, Pastor Katie. You bet. That's digging into the Word. It's time to pray our way through the week. My name is Deborah Hansen, and I serve as Director of Spiritual Formation at First Lutheran Church. I am delighted to pray with and for you today for God's presence this week. Refining God, move through your church. Root out practices that harm your people and kindle a fire for sharing the gospel among bishops, pastors, deacons, and all the baptized. Renewing God, transform your creation. Steer us from habits that harm what you have made and guide us in practices that preserve and restore creatures and habitats. Ruling God, teach the nations your ways. Strengthen organizations and communities that broker peace and care for refugees, immigrants, and all caught in the center of conflict. Rescuing God, restore your people who are in any need. Heal all who are suffering, provide comfort and strength, and nurture sustained wholeness for the future. Reforming God, fill this congregation with your presence. Enrich our seasonal preparations and bless the efforts by worship committees, music ensembles, staff, clergy, and lay leaders as they work in the weeks ahead. Reassuring God, we remember those who have died and rest in you. Guide us in deep gratitude for their lives and allow us to learn from their faithful witness. Savior of the nations, come. And receive these prayers and the pleas of our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Deborah, for those prayers. We appreciate you greatly, as we do Pastor Katie, and sharing her, bearing her soul today. Just uh, awesome work with this whole Jesse tree thing. This is all her creation. 
and it's just been absolutely wonderful. I think all the blocks have gone out. We have little blocks for families. There were some 300 sets, uh, just some amazing stuff that has happened here at church. We appreciate Pastor Katie for stopping by today. Maddie, uh, Newhouse, and all your tremendous work for our church, breathing new life into our volunteers and, and just all corners of the church. We appreciate you, Maddie, as well. Uh, if you want to, uh, Christmas Eve is coming up. If you want to join us for those services, we're having four this year. We're a, a kind of a kid-centric one at three. They're all kid-friendly, but it'd be more kid-centric. Pastor Katie at three o'clock. We have our contemporary at five. The band is going to pull out all the stops. And then seven and nine are traditional with the organ and the choirs and, and the traditional music. So uh, bring a friend, bring it, you know, invite a neighbor, a coworker, a, a friend of yours, a family member. Uh, or members and just so uh, let's fill the place uh, online and uh, on site uh, just with some Christmas joy on the 24th hope you can join us in we're looking forward to that great celebration coming up as a church family with that we will say goodbye for today hope you have a good week enjoy some of the warmer weather sounds like it's on the horizon and we'll see you back here next time until then remember to put your faith first